We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Point to me where the pain is. Are you still with me, Hannah? Hey. Yeah? As they face more heart-pounding action... Can you feel me touching you? Yes. ..and more medical emergencies. You thought you were going to die? Yeah. You're going to be fine. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Can you pop that back on there again, just over the top? Hold that on. We'll have to roll you a little bit one way. Ooh. How do you feel at the moment, Petal? Ooh. What's that from? There are some new faces. I do think we work well together. We really. make a good team. Yeah. What do you think I look like to you, Is that what you're saying? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> and some old friends. Pardon? Thanks. Oh, no, you turned on the sausage. <laughs> Don't panic, just move out me way. Body mounted cameras record every moment. Did you bump your nose? Just a kid. No, no. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. There's lots of crypt men here. There's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Look at that. People knock the NHS, don't they? And I've just wiped your nose twice. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Come hello, high water, we're coming. Hemorrhoids back in. <laughs> good day. Eh? Yeah. I'm going to have some service to you. Regular crewmates Gary Clark and Lee Timbrell are waiting for their first call of the day. New assignment. Smoke filled flat. Major trauma. Unknown patient. Smoke inhalation. When gases from smoke get into lungs, it can irritate and block them. This patient needs urgent medical attention, but getting to them is the crew's first challenge. Seven o'clock in the morning, start a rush hour. Yeah. The M6 car park. Due to the traffic, it takes 10 minutes to travel just four miles. When they arrive, they're greeted by the fire brigade, who called for medical assistance. When we're called by emergency services, there's always a potential for being it more severe, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's somebody who's had training is saying, we need the ambulance. The fire crews are clearing the smoke out of the flat using a powerful extractor and have started treating the man who lives there by the time Gary and Lee get to him. Morning. Morning. Hello, sir. I'm Gary, this is Lee. Morning, Ah, uh, morning. Morning. This is That's Paul. better. Hi, right, Paul. Uh, smoke inhalation, sorry, mate. We've got Paul at quarter to seven. Smoke inhalation from a candle. I think it's been must have been slow burning all night. Yeah. He's woke up this morning to take his tablets, gone into the living room, full of smoke. Do uh, you know if the door between his bedroom and the sitting room is open or shut? Was your bedroom door shut, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Right, that's not good. I think, yeah, so when he came out, must have... Then a big loft, he didn't get him out for the yeah. night. Yeah. Been giving him O2 so, now since we... Well, since we got where well, it was about five past seven. Yeah. And then I started giving it to him. Coughing quite a lot? He was co not too much, not to be honest. Yeah. His stats have been fine. Yeah. In, Any sort around his nose or his mouth at all? Nothing like nothing. that, no, no. Superb. So, right. A bit shook right. up as he's absolutely natural. Oh. Epileptic, diabetic. Yeah. Paul has epilepsy along with other medical conditions. 
So for Gary and Lee, there's the extra concern that the stress of everything that's happened might bring on a seizure. What we're going to do, we'll drop this mask off you. Yeah, have a little chat to you. Yeah. Must have been one hell of a candle. Yeah. We're going to do all our basic ops. You've had the sticky dots before, oh, yeah. wrists and ankles many a time. It's yeah. A little look, is it? Yeah. Just relax your arm. Open your mouth first. Well, that's it. Yeah. No evidence of such. Good. How do you feel in yourself? Bit sugar. Bit sugar. It's gonna mate. <laughs> really is. That's not surprising whatsoever. You both feel dry at all? A bit dry. Little bit dry. Right. We'll get you a drink of water in a minute and that. Yeah. That way we can check out your swallowing. Right. Who's these, these mate? Pictures? So it wasn't even a real candle? No. Oh right. Oh. Like an artificial one. Just a battery. Battery, battery powered yeah. on now. Okay. Oh, so it's literally what's in there has been burning, you know what is it? Yeah. yeah. Blooming neck. Okay. I thought they were the safe option. Yeah. The battery powered <laughs> artificial candle. Yeah. It does smell like real candle though. The smoke in Paul's flat had been caused by a fake plastic candle that had been left on top of a heater and melted through the night. The fumes given off by burning plastic can be very toxic. Small scratch coming up on your finger. So you've done the right thing by having the battery-operated candles, there's no naked flames. Yeah, and that blooming sets off. OK, give that a good squeeze. Well, I'm buying no more than candles. No. No, no, I wouldn't. 5.8. Lovely. What we can do is we can drop all these off because uh, your heart's pumping absolutely fine, we don't need them on. Yeah. And the less things that are attached to you, the less poorly you are. Everything's looking fantastic at the moment. It really is. In all the chaos, it seems that one key piece of information has slipped through. You didn't tell me your missus was still in there. I told her. I didn't know, yeah, she's still in bed. Yeah. Well, she's in bed, the door's shut, she's not bothered. So, <laughs> <laughs> guys, you're looking better anyway, Paul. Yeah. So, she's had a flat full of firemen and she's been completely oblivious to it. Well, <laughs> no, she's seen them and then stopped in bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. I wish I could. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go to hospital? Mm. No, I don't see any point. You might find a bit later you cough up a little bit mm. and the only thing I'd like to see is just see you, drink a bit of water or whatever. I'm sure it's fine because you've took your tablets already, yeah. but I'd just like to see you take you know, a sip of water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling, Paul? All right, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so yeah. we're staying here, is it, yeah? Yeah, he's stopping here. He doesn't want to go to hospital. There's no yeah. need for him to and everything. Yeah. Everything's been done by your souls anyway. Yeah. Anything that's there being blown off. See you Cheers, lads. Thanks a lot. Shall we go in then, Paul? I'm working for two months. Satisfied that Paul is OK, Gary wants to help him back into his flat now the smoke has cleared. Any further problems, you can see your GP or anything yeah. like that. Right, and I'd probably get rid of the rest of these candles. I'd probably chuck them. <laughs> you take care, my friend. OK, all the best, mate. Well... First job of the shift, and a very unusual one. Yep. Fire brigade called us because of the smoke inhalation. And potentially caused by an electric candle. Yep. Cheap electric candle. candle. Pack of three for a pound is quite cheap. It's nice when you can do a job and no one's actually hurt. Yeah. So, right, we'll check you over and that. Everything's fine and that. Worse than the advice. We don't like to see people hurt. No. It's good to use your skills and be able to help people. Yes. I just feel like moving away and buying a cat. Well, adopting a cat. Being a crazy cat man. For years. <laughs> that was quite good, that's in a bit fast. <laughs> Maybe I was a cat in a previous life. So I'd like to come back as my cat. 
your exact cat. Because what he does is, he lies in my warm bed all day. I get up to work, he comes down, he gets fed, he goes back upstairs and lies in my warm bed for the rest of the day. He gets up and has a play, and then he goes back into the warm bed and goes back to sleep and naps some more. So I can't see a downside to his existence. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. In Dudley, paramedic Laura Hickman and student paramedic Kerry Richards have just left base when they get information through about a patient. Oh, hello. Category one, let's oh, we got a cat one. A category one call is the most urgent request for help the crew can receive. Less so, 16, 15. Less than 16, 15, lesser. Oh, I don't like when his kids are really poor, No, nor do I. The job that's come in is to treat a child who's having a seizure. Oh, nothing like a bit of category one driving, is there? Oh, God, no. They have to go to the other side of Wolverhampton, eight miles away. You find that when you've got a, a cat one and you know it's a kid, you drive faster. Yep. Just as they arrive at the house, they receive more information. Has ectopic atrial tachycardia. Their patient has a rare and serious condition that causes the heart to beat very erratically. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello, puppets. Tell us the story, then, Mum. What's going on? She's been complaining of chest pains since quarter past six. And when I've listened, she's got a run of ectopic, continual ectopic beats, um, and it's jumping from 94 to about 161. OK. Um, and every time the ectopic beats come, I literally feel like her heart is kicking my hand. Has um, she no. had a fit? We've had it come through. That We've had this come through that she's having a fit. No, she, she said she asked me if it was anything to do with epilepsy. I was like, no, it's all cardiac related. It's nothing to do yeah, with epilepsy. Yeah, I told her she was fitting. Eight-year-old Summer is not having an epileptic seizure. However, her symptoms are very serious. Does it feel like someone's kicking you in your chest? Can you feel it? Summer was diagnosed with her condition when she was just two and a half years old. Normally, it's controlled by daily medication, but for some reason, it's not working today. Can you see it jumping, look? Watch it jumping. Summer's heart rate was up and down. I've never seen anything like it before in a child of her age. It was in the low 90s, one minute, then as high as 160. For a child of her age, it's actually quite dangerous for it to be so erratic. Do you feel unwell? How does she look to you? No, as much. Do you feel like it's... Can you feel it playing up, though? You can. That naughty ticker of yours. Right, nice and still then, buddy. That's slowed down a bit now, isn't it? It went back up to 160. I'll do earlier. Laura and Kerry need to figure out what's causing Summer's heart rate to be so unpredictable. Come here, buddy. Check if you've got a brain. I mean, check your temperature. Ah, that's what's done it then. Yeah. 38. Summer's heart rate isn't settling, and she's showing signs of an infection. Laura and Kerry need to take her to the cardiac ward at Birmingham's Children's Hospital urgently. Not the again. Yeah, we've got to keep an eye on your ticker, buddy. The specialist hospital is nearly 20 miles away. Summer is treated here often, and the cardiac team will be waiting to see her. It's still jumping, isn't it? I did say it 160. It has jumped right up again. How does she look to you? A bit pale. She, she normally go a bit pale when this starts. This is kind of a normal when they're... To be honest with you, this has been the longest one we've had for a while. The longer it takes for Summer's heart rate to get back to normal, the more tired her heart will get. Left untreated, this would eventually lead to heart failure. 
We did have 97 temporarily then. Yeah, that would be normal. But yeah, you can see it's jumping all over the shop. It's just jumping all over the shop. But you're not feeling sick, you're not feeling dizzy, you've not got any headaches, you've got no funny spots in front of your eyes or double vision like if you've crossed your eyes. All right. With children, I feel as if I have to act quicker because they can compensate, they can look absolutely fine for a long period of time, then they'll suddenly just drop. We've had six years of this, nearly seven years of When Summer was originally diagnosed, doctors didn't think she'd survive, but she's fought against the odds. Now they're considering surgery, but it's not without risk, especially in someone so young. It's not something I've heard of before in a child. I mean, <coughs> so when it comes to trying different medications and trying different procedures and manoeuvres and stuff, yeah. it's almost like they're having to try it out, and I don't want that. You don't yeah. want to be used to your bigger stuff. I don't want to mess around, you know. Have you still got chest pain now? Has it gone again? It's gone again. What, when you had the chest pain, what did it feel like? It felt like, um, you know when you're like, 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 it felt like I just had my arms out and just fell on the setting like this. Arms like, out, like the like pressure? Like, yeah, as, if, I, like as if someone was pushing you there? Yeah, like someone like pushing you, then you go pushing you. I don't think we're too far off now. Where am I? Oh no, we are here. Yeah. <sighs> All right then, are you ready to go see the doctors, my sweet? Summer will be thoroughly checked over by the paediatric cardiac specialists. She was absolutely beautiful, weren't she? She was a little darling. Bless her. It must be horrible to have a condition like that. At such a young age. Well, Mum was saying what she's suffering with compared to some children who are, uh, can get quite poorly is nothing. Yeah. There's a lot of children out there who's a lot more poorly than her. And she says, this is nothing. Oh, that's she, quite a nice. She's still healthy. Yeah. And they're, Managing it to a degree. She's happy, she's healthy, she's still having a normal childhood. What more can I ask for? That's it, isn't it? Most genuine patient of the day. Indeed. Have you had batter? Have you had orange chips? They were, you... they were a black country thing, they were... Overrated. I don't understand that the craze about lots of non-black country folk enjoy black like country battered chips. Odd folk. It's not like when you think of a battered sausage. It's not like it's a chip dunked in batter like that. You, you need to try them to, uh, yeah. It cost me thirty p extra for my portion of chips to have this batter on, and I'd rather save my thirty p. We get a job in a chip shop next, yeah? You want normal or orange? Normal. No chips for Ollie, please. He's been saying nasty things about battered chips. No, I love chips, just normal no, chips. No, 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 no. Said it now. In Willen Hall are paramedics Mike Hipgrave and Dina Evans. The pair have known each other for three years. Do you want to hear something funny? When I very first passed my driving test, I, just before I passed, I switched driving instructors. And when I switched over to her, she was like, OK, let's start with what you know. And she said to me, OK, what's that wing mirror for? You know what I said? <laughs> Say that the car looks balanced in that one. So the car looks balanced? So that it looks even. What did she say? She went, oh, dear. oh God. <laughs> And you passed. <laughs> oh. 
before long they get details of their next job. So we've got shortness of breath, uh, a male, hasn't got an age on it yet, he's got COPD. Their patient has a progressive lung disease that causes breathing difficulties. The crew get more information. Um, we've got a 75-year-old male. He's got chest pain, sudden onset of breathing problems. The patient, Alan, has had COPD for around 10 years. He normally manages OK, but today he's suddenly deteriorated. Hi. Hello there. I'm Mike, OK? okay. This is uh, Dina. Hello. Is it Alan, is it? What's happened then, Alan? I was just trying to get me there. OK. <laughs> no, when did it start today? Oh, dinner, dinner time. About dinner time. Just, just pop your finger yeah, in there for me. Let's get some uh, right. obs done on you first. OK. Has your inhaler helped at all? Have you been using your inhalers? I've been using them all. And they've not helped? Not yeah, this time. OK, sweet. All right. <laughs> 85 yeah, we're going to need to anyway, aren't we? Have you got any pain anywhere, Alan? Just in the chest. In the chest. And what time did that start this afternoon as well? Yeah. Does it move anywhere? No, it just lower. Just stays there. Just I'm going to give you a little nebulizer, all right? Yeah, that's fine. Oh. He's a bit blue around the lips yes. at the moment. We need to get his levels up slightly. The bluish colouring around Alan's lips and cheeks is a clear sign that his oxygen levels are dangerously low. A nebulizer is the fastest way to get Alan breathing effectively. Is it the worst? Yeah. Have you been in hospital before with it? I've been in hospital with the heart and the breathing as well. What with your heart? <laughs> Alan told us that he suffered with COPD alongside atrial fibrillation. The two in conjunction can cause some major health issues with breathlessness and chest pain. It was quite important that we got Alan to hospital as soon as possible. I feel the colour, You actually feel quite warm yeah. to touch. 38.9. Oh, gosh, yeah, very warm, absolutely. You actually got a temperature, which is probably why you feel cold. So let's get this fleecy thing off as well. So, Alan, it's going to be a little trip up to the hospital today. Right. So we need to uh, sort that breathing out, don't we? Yeah. It's not really good, is it? Today? It's yeah. your anniversary today? 55 years. Oh, 65 years. 50. 55 years. 55 years. <laughs> I was going to say, 65 years is pretty, pretty Oh, impressive. no! What a way to spend your anniversary. Even though it's a special day, the team have no choice, as Alan needs to be seen by doctors. Keep your arms in, sweetheart. Keep your arms tucked in. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Simply moving Alan to the ambulance has made his breathing even worse. <laughs> right, Alan, we need to get your bottom onto here, all right? Yeah. So you hold on to me. And swing your legs up for me. How are you feeling, Alan? How's that pain in your chest now? It's OK. Dina calls ahead to ensure the hospital is prepared for such a sick patient. I've got a 75-year-old male with um, some central chest pain and exacerbation of COPD. And for him to say that to you. We normally have to... You normally have to nag at him. Yeah. yeah. Typical man, then. Yeah. Oh. It's come back. Yeah. 
still in that one place? Yeah, it doesn't move anywhere else. No. We're here now. In A&E, Alan will be taken straight into recess to try and get his breathing under control and to find out what's causing his severe chest pain. I think he looked really unwell when we first got there. Yeah, he did. He was definitely really cyanosed. Really cyanosed, wasn't he? And um, obviously pyrexic and numerous things. And his sats wouldn't come up, even nerves and oxygen. They did initially with the nerve and then dip back down again when we got him on the truck. Any sort of movement, and he, he just wasn't maintaining his sats, was he? No, absolutely not. There's two wheels in a bar. One wheel turns to the other wheel and says, And the other wheel says, Go on, Barry, you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get Pikachu on a bus? You Pokemon? That's awful. <laughs> so one of them Christmas crackers. Do you know what that's on par with? What? What's Brian's Just dead? ahead. Pookie Bright. Oh. And you're still laughing? Because I said poo. Oh my god. Do you laugh at we? No, that's just immature. <laughs> Medic Ollie Raven and technician Jamie Busby have just finished their break early as another job has come through. 17-year-old male who says that he's had a seizure. It's not fitting now, but he's a known epileptic. However, this one is different to the ones he normally has. All oh, right, okay. So might have something going on possibly. You never know. Their patient was working close by when his seizure happened. Hi, hey, mate. Is it you we're here for? What's your name? Yeah. Jack. Do you want to come and jump on the ambulance, Jack? Right then, Jack. Have a seat on there for us. We'll get the doors closed and the heat on. Yeah, because you answer your otherwise. Oh, right. Who are you, who are you, Tim? You his uncle. All yeah, yeah. oh, right then. Uh, how old are you, Jack? Um, 17. 17. What's happened today then, mate? Um, I was working my uncle and, like, all of a sudden I went to a fit. All of a sudden? Yeah. Yeah. Jack has suffered with epilepsy all his life. However, he's never had a full seizure before. Normally, he has something called absences, where he stares into space and is unable to respond. You took your Look. medication two weeks ago, didn't you? What so medication are you on? So for two weeks, he hasn't had no absences at all. It stopped. Because they've upped it. And then from when he was here, two hours, he's had about 10 or 15, and then that fit, come on then. Would it be normal for you to have 10 or 15 absences? Um, no. There's clearly been a big change in Jack's seizure patterns. How does he present when he's having the absences? Does he literally just uh, gaze in? Is he? Gaze for five, ten seconds, then he kicks is that literally at ten seconds? Yeah, five, five, ten, ten seconds. seconds then he kicks and how is how is he when he comes round after that? Is he just normal? back back to yeah, normal, like normal. snaps yeah, back yeah, and back away. to work? But today in there, yeah, he like, just started oh, um, making. Take, 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 take so he was stood up. And yeah, and his hand was cramping up. Just a, Hands? Yeah, mm, did hands. they did they just cramp or did they shake or did they just they come up to his chest? Into his body like sort of that sort of. Yeah. His tongue was stuck out about an inch. So but he, tried to get he, his tongue out. He didn't drop to the yeah. floor. He's come on to me and then I've held him and then we've sort of gone down to yeah. him. Spout to me. How long would you say he was fitting for fitting though? Five minutes. And then would you say he's come back round as normal now? He's just got some colour in. He was very pale. Jack's new seizure was quite concerning for us as it was so out of the blue and unusual. Anything can change the type or the way a seizure presents. Not taking your medication, stress, lack of sleep, 
um, being so young, even his hormones can throw it around. Um, and if there was anything going on in Jack's life, we needed to know so that we could take that into account. How do you feel in yourself? What now? Right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming back. Coming back. You, you been stressed about anything in life no, at the moment? Not really. Nothing. I was having a spot of blood out your finger, mate. Really lack of sleep. Mm. Mm. She keeps stopping up till seven o'clock in the morning playing Xbox. That's not going to help. That's not going to help. Especially, especially small, small scratch. Staying up late and, and staring the... at a screen as well. And you're listening. I know. Do you drink cups of tea? Um, coffee. Coffee. Do you have sugar in it? No. Nah. If 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 your uncle got you a cup of coffee with some sugar in, would you drink it for us? There we go. Yeah. Just his blood sugar's a little bit on the low side, so is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. How long you worked for your uncle for? Two, three weeks. Oh, not long then. Do you enjoy it? Yeah. What's it doing? He does graphics and science. Oh, does he? For like businesses and stuff, is that what it is? You're doing the signs for the business? Yeah, I'm I don't know, is he allowed to see you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it best to take him out so he can rest? The problem is, I'll just be a bit worried, really, that a 17 year old lad has had a seizure and he's never had one before. And I think it needs looking at, really, sort of. It might be nothing that, that you know, the, the doctors might say, we're happy, actually, go back and see a neurologist. But I wouldn't be happy just to sort of say, oh, you're fine to go home and sit on your sofa. Because if another one happens today, which it could do, that's what I'd worry about. So I know it's probably not what you want to do, but I would. I would say we need to pop you up to A&E. Okay. Is that right? Yes, I know Mum's doing it. I'll phone her, I'll say to tell her. Because she's literally going to go to the shop. I've found her. She's in the shop, does she? She's got a cafeteria in Oh, really? Okay. Does that mean free butties? Yeah, if you can handle it, you've cheated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt it will. We'll be swinging in there every day. <laughs> Jack's uncle will follow the ambulance in his van. Yeah. Russell's all A&E, it'll be. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Not what you're expecting today, is it? No. I didn't do work until that happened. Good to have a bit of money in your pocket now, is it? Well, I'll probably get paid now. Yeah. Yeah, finish the job. Is this the sort of thing you want to be doing then, is it? With work? Yeah, the job I want to do, like electrics or something. Oh, you want to do like electrics? Or something like that. It's a worthwhile job, isn't it? We always need electricians and Brick layers, don't we? So, this is just going to tie you over for a bit, is it? Bit of money. Yeah. Buy more Xbox games. <laughs> yeah. Stay up later. I'll probably just stay up too, but not as late now. Yeah, yeah, probably wise. With the roads quiet, they arrive at hospital quickly. So, almost here now. Still feeling all right? Yep, I'm sure. We'll jump off and get you in. Jack will now be seen by doctors, who will assess him and look carefully at his current prescription. Hey, he's obviously having a bit of a battle, isn't he, with his epilepsy medication? Yeah, since he was Jack. born, bless him. It's amazing now, once they get the meds right, as long as you live a healthy lifestyle, how you can be practically symptom free. Yeah, he's probably still got a bit of a, a way to go. Mm. It's difficult as well with him being 17, he's still growing and stuff like that, isn't he? Everything's so still changing, isn't his it? His body's still changing a lot, so it makes it even more like, difficult. He was a string bean, wasn't he? I know, yeah. Not a lot to him. My window, uh, when I sort of like lower the window, it starts going at a slight angle, so it'll only open a couple of inches. Yeah. Um, which is no good when we're trying to get to the top car park, you yeah. have to swipe your pass. So I, I actually fell out of the car the other day. <laughs> I pulls up to uh, the barrier and I have to open my car door. So I'm leaning over and I was like, I over and I, I was at such a funny angle, I couldn't get myself back up. And there were then people queuing behind me. So I was like trying to make out that I dropped something. <laughs> so if for no other reason, but to, so I don't look an idiot at work, I need to get my window fixed. 
In the West Midlands, paramedic crewmates and flatmates Kai Brooks and Craig Alsop are on shift. Another day in paradise, are Craig? Indeed. We've been working together probably about 12 months or so, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, we've done quite a few shifts Ever together. Ever since we went to university together, it was uh, yeah. a bromance from the off. It was, yeah. I feel like I've not seen you in the, uh, in the last four off. Considering we live in the same house, yeah, I've not seen you for three days. <laughs> it's not long before their first job of the day comes through. So we have a Category 4 case. Um, we've got a patient who's fallen, female, 70 years of age. Um, she's unable to get herself up. I've been here before. I'm almost certain I've been here before. I have a feeling I have as well. Either way. The patient, Margaret, lives on her own. When she fell, she couldn't get up. Thankfully, she had her mobile phone in her pocket and was able to dial 999. Hello? Hello. Is it Margaret? Hello, Margaret. I'm Craig. This is Kai. I've met you before. I've met you before as well. I have. It's been a while. You're separate. I have. Margaret suffers with MS, multiple sclerosis, which limits her mobility. So what have you done then? Have you just lost balance? Yeah. And I'm trying to get onto my scooter to go down yeah. town to do a bit of shopping. OK. And I went on the floor. So you've just... I'm a silly old bat. So I feel your wrist before we do anything else. OK. That's Simon, you're what, Craig? I'm Craig, that's Kai. Oh, Kai. K-Y-E. K-Y-E, yeah. yeah. you got it. You got no pain there, no? 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 All right. And you can feel me touching your feet? Yeah. Yeah? You so you've not hurt yourself. I don't we, we just need right. to see, okay. I'll tell you what we'll do, you've got a good pulse, so we'll have a go at sitting you up. Craig and Kai want to check Margaret's fall hasn't done her any real harm. We'll sit you up, yeah? I'll just scrub. Let's just get your bearings. Are you rolled over straight? Ah, ah, ah. Where's that painful? That knee that I think I might have landed on. Yeah. Have you ever broken your hips or anything before? No. Can you bend your knees? Can you dig your that heels one, in? I can bend that knee. The but other is it because of your MS, is take, it? Yeah, take my shoe off, darling. I do know quite a bit about MS. Um, my mum is a sufferer of MS. Um, she does struggle from day to day. Let's sit you, sit you up. Both Kai and myself have been out to Margaret um, quite a few times. Usually what we do is help her up off the floor, just make sure she's OK. Let's should we move this out of the way. That's very good. Mind your fingers. I'm going to lift it over, yeah? He's never used one of those in his life. No. Put it over it, mate. He would, wouldn't even know what it is. I live, I, I live with not. him, so he'll, he'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Ow! With the help of a special lifting chair, they get Margaret back on her feet. All right. Have we got, like, a frame or anything that you use in the house? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we'll use the frame. Should we have a little walk into your living room? A bit more space, yeah? She's still unsteady and needs to take it very easy. A little bit further. And again. That's it. Winning. Gotcha. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Everything we've done, numbers-wise, is fine. You've not hurt yourself, Mobilized. apart from those little bruises, maybe. Um, so I don't think we need to take you anywhere. You more us. OK. We've helped you off the floor. That's the main thing, isn't it? I am in your... I'm very indebted to you. That's all right. That's what we're here for, isn't it? Before the crew head off, there's one more thing they want to help Margaret with. I'll bring your scooter in. Do you know how to put it into neutral? Yeah. What are you? Wonderful. Call me Lewis Hamilton. No, not that speed. Where would you like it? You want it in the kitchen? I want it in the kitchen. 
Oh, you want it facing forwards out there? No, I just That's it. That'll do. And get you on there, and then uh, you'll be good to go. All right then, Margaret. We'll, Look after uh, yourself. We'll exit so you don't run us over. All right, no, no worries. We'll leave the door open for you. You're no pain to us. Take care. Thank you, Jay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. We've both been answered before, haven't we? We both have, yeah. Obviously, she suffers with MS and a lot to deal with, really. You're in pain pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. Your mobility is very, uh, very poor. Thankfully, no injuries, bit of a bruise to a knee at worst, but um, yeah. Off she went anyway on a scooter, doing a bit of shopping, so. Happy as Larry into and town gets, to uh, get a few bits and pieces. Yeah, she gets what she needs. whose lounge was filled with toxic fumes from a melted battery-operated candle, didn't need any more treatment and has felt fine ever since. Eight-year-old Summer's erratic heartbeat calmed down after just a few hours in hospital. She was discharged the same day. She and her family have decided to go ahead with heart surgery and are waiting for a date for the operation. Alan's symptoms of chest pain and breathlessness were caused by pneumonia. He was discharged after a day in hospital and is now being cared for at home. Jack hasn't had any more serious seizures since the one he had at work. At the hospital, they altered his medication and he's being carefully monitored. He's now back working with his uncle and training to be an electrician at college. Margaret, who suffers with multiple sclerosis, has been fine since her fall. It hasn't put her off using her mobility scooter and she manages to get all her shopping done in town. Are you happy to go home now? I am. Had enough? Long time ago. 